Hi everybody, Dan here with No Games for Old Men, and welcome to the brand new, brand new Let's Play Blind Playthrough of Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden. This is the new game, due out February 13th, but they actually released it a day early. So it is now the 12th, and I am uh, getting to play it now. So, uh, new game from Don't Nod. It's a French developer responsible for uh, the Life is Strange series, uh, Remember Me on PS3. I played that on PS3. That was long before this channel was a thing, so uh, I don't have a playthrough of that. But what I did play through was Vampire, Vampire, V-A-M-P-Y-R, that did that last November, or November of 2022, as uh, my sort of Halloween game. So. This is their brand new game. As soon as I heard that this game was out, I immediately wishlisted it and then decided, you know what? I'm I'm not even going to wait. I'm just going to I'm going to go. So, I uh, I pre-ordered it and here we are. So, let's go new game. I'm super excited for this. So, okay, right off the bat, we've got difficulty, story, easy, normal, hard and very hard. Very hard for players who seek a very challenging combat experience. <laughs> I wonder. Let's see. Difficulty modifies enemy damage, enemy health points, the amount of decoctions you can recover after encounters, and the timing of exploration puzzles. Uh-oh. You can change the difficulty whenever you want during the game. Well, you know what? <laughs> the timing of exploration puzzles, that one kind of worries me because I just finished Shogunners, and there are some... There are some puzzles in that one that I failed to complete in in the uh, allotted time and that resulted in instant character death for Scarlet. So uh, I'm a little concerned about that one, but I do kind of want to challenge myself. So uh, let's go very hard. I don't know if this game has New Game Plus. They don't say anything about being intended for New Game Plus. But I don't know. I'm feeling a little bit bold because I just recently finished Days Gone, my very first first playthrough on Hard 2, right off the bat. And I got through that, so um, let's go. Let's go very hard. I, if I have to roll it back, I have to roll it back. Well, well, it says you can change the difficulty at any time, so I won't have to restart. That is a beautiful image right there. Good start, guys. Super excited for this game. I thought Vampire was so much fun. And this game appears to have, from what I've read so far, appears to have the same type of morality choices that you can make. Madam, sir, the ship lies at anchor off New Eden. A tender stands at your disposal. Very dark. Wow. I wonder if I want to turn the brightness up a, a bit. of clouds. Great long fluffy bastards. Low over the sea. I dreamed of the abyss, in the darkest reaches of the deepest ocean. I mean, that's pillow talk for everybody, right? Everybody talks like that? And a good day to you, my love. And a good day to you, too. Are we in New England? Welcome to America. Something's bothering you. Charles's letter. What of it? The ghost must be uncommonly dangerous, or he would banish it himself. Then we shall charge him double. <laughs> I'm serious. 
If the Reverend needs help, this can be no easy business. Red, you best be ready. Now be careful, Master Duarte. Your apprentice stands ready to serve. Come on, Antea, we need to go. Night be. <laughs> Rory McWraith, gallant to the last. Life to the living, death to the dead. Consider Ooh. our lovers, Antea and Red, the greatest banishers I ever knew. Life to the living, we say, and death to the dead. It is not so simple. Since the dawn of humanity, the dead have lingered. Dead as alive, we are complex and emotional beings. Many and tangled are the ties that bind. Since the beginning of memory, banishers have fought to sever those ties. Death is but a trifle. It comes to us all. To haunt or be haunted. There lies the true horror. I, Charles Davenport, should know it. The haunting of New Eden scared me to death. I dearly wish I had not begged my friends to come and lift the curse. Loving the setup already. June 7th, 1695. If this is June, I'd hate to see January. <laughs> I wanted to freeze my backside off in the summertime. I'd have stayed in Scotland. London wasn't much better. Look at it. It's cold as a bishop's arse. And twice as white. I don't mind saying it, I'm very disappointed. Charles wasn't lying. New Eden is cold as death. You may well be disappointed. Great setup of the atmosphere to there, just establishing it as summertime, but very cold. It's kind of the opposite of what I'm used to living in California. Or is it because of the curse? Has the curse made everything? I think that's it. Huh? You'd better be at the tavern with a hot grog or two. All right, L to move, right to move the camera. Let's take a look at our first hero here, Antia. You know what? I think I am gonna, I am gonna boost the. The brightness a bit. Okay, I'm back. I have boosted the brightness 10%, uh, so it's a little bit better. Uh, it's still dark. Uh, it, it is nighttime right now, so I don't want it to be super bright because that's just. Uh, you know, breaks the immersion. But I would like to see some details here. I'm sure the artists spent a lot of effort putting things together, making oh, things look good. Weedy of long, boring sea voyages to grim faraway lands. I can't remember the last time we did something else than work. After this, we should set sail somewhere warm and safe. The dead don't linger. No such place. But it's not a bad idea. We get stuff out of these crates. Probably at some point, huh? We just started, so there's probably uh, limited control at the moment. All right, we'll just follow. We'll just follow the early game tutorial. And looks gorgeous, though. Loving it visually. Got a little bit of that spooky vibe that Vampire had. This place is. I heard you the first time, but I don't disagree. <gasps> oh, 
over or under. Okay, so the game's gonna turn determine which is more applicable. Here's an over. A lot of lichen on that cliff side there. Oh, we got we got rats. Got some plague tail vibes here. I think we can get through here. Sure. Let's go traipsing through the rotten, falling down house. Alright, wild shrivel plus five, lilac hyacinth. So, herbs and flowers, I'm guessing there's uh, Looks steady enough. crafting of some kind. There was in Vampire, so it makes sense. Watch out! Whoa. Keep going. I'll find a way to meet up with you. Over eager apprentices. Hop up onto the roof. I can break my way through here. Press RB to destroy breakable elements. Ah, ooh. Nice. Are there loots in the in the breakables too? So if I come over here and bust up some stuff, they're not even breakable. Well, squeak. Oh, tuck and roll. Something that I don't like. Uh oh. Okay. RB to light attack. Oh! Crud. <laughs> I took a hit already. Man. Oh, another one. Oh gosh. There's two more. Just a sneaky wanderer. You? Same, but I managed. Are these specters watching the road? Maybe. But are they keeping people outside town? Or are they keeping them in? Alright, we've got something here. Collectibles. A letter, old and damp. Dear cousin, this farce that new Eden that is new Eden town has gone on long enough. You tried. You tried all you could to make it work, to build something here. But if the words you send me are true, then by God, take your wife and your precious children, pack your belongings, and leave that ungodly place. Come to Providence and live with us. There's a farm work here, and Simone and I will gladly take you until you find a place of your own. Please, I'm begging you, come to us. We are family, and the children will be safer here. John James, Providence, 8th of September, 1694. So it looks like items that are look slightly rusted, or that like that have this barrel's got this little yellowish uh, kind of corruption to it. Those are destructible, but if they don't have that, let me see if there's a barrel that looks clean. Maybe that'll... Yeah, I see like this. Destroy those. Okay, nothing in any of these yet.
I like the use of lichen on the walls here to indicate uh, a traversable area, but it still looks kind of natural. Especially if you've spent any time out in woods and mountains, uh, you know, lichen like that is all over the place, so. Take. What am I taking? Seven leather. More rats. Okay, like, see, these don't have that yellow corruption, so let's see if these are breakable. No. Okay. Alright, well, that's, that's a good thing to keep in mind so I don't waste my time trying to hit stuff that doesn't look breakable. Or that isn't breakable. Can she clear that? Wow, good jump, kid. Behind you. What was that ability? Can she do that too? And I just as easy as falling off a box. <laughs> That's a great line. <laughs> Can't tell how long these people are dead. The original settlers, perhaps. Forever. This doesn't work well. I've got to think that at some point, some of these breakables are going to have things in them. Ooh, banishment. Attacking with your weapons fills the banish gauge, which is the yellow one. When the banish gauge is full, press A to banish your target. Time to leave for good. Oh, that's what he did. Okay. Cool. Ooh. Uh oh. Is there a dodge? Like Oh yeah, B. Okay. I don't know why they didn't teach us that yet. And is there a stamina? Oops. I dodged right back into that one. Oh boy, that was bad news. dust. And my health gauge is gone, so is health limited to combat? Like, am I healing out of combat now? Another note, damp and bloody, this one. Perhaps these words will be lost in time, but I must write them. The date? I cannot say. I know it is the month of June in the year 1695. I thought we would be safer in Providence. I thought we would finally see the children again, and the golden wheat fields would ring with their laughter. Their mother now lies dead, and I shall join her soon. Something insidious walks the roads. Terrible spirits took us. New Eden is cursed. You who reads this now, I tell you, run. <laughs> Awesome. These people left New Eden Town just a few days ago. What exactly is going on here? Okay, I just broke a barrel and something was in it, so yep, definitely got breakables, uh, breakable loots. Yeah. So, yep, that'll make that, that effort worthwhile. Right, trigger to deal a charged attack fills the banish gauge faster. Ooh, this is a whoa! Oh crap! Oh boy! Oh, dead. <laughs> Journey has ended. Womp womp. Oh, I'm loving these loading screen artworks.
Very cool. Okay, so what is the penalty for death then? Just jumps you back to the last checkpoint, or do you lose items? And is there a limit to how often you can do a charge attack? Is there a cooldown involved? Oh, whoop! Alright, let's do a banish. Okay, so he was at about a little less than half health, and that took care of him completely. So, banish is is quite a powerful ability. Boy. I failed to kill the very first tough enemy I came across. That all goes badly for the case. Situation's worse than you thought. Let's wait to hear what Charles has to say. I did choose very hard, after all. I may live to regret that. Ooh, I love that. Empty docks in a growing settlement. Building up there. Hillside. Looks a good sign. By the time selectmen sit on their asses. Isn't that what selectmen do? When we get to town, we may need to split up to cover more ground. You may count on the most responsible student a banisher could have. We'll see if you remember some of your teaching, if you're up for it. Always. Boston, Fort Jericho, the Harrow's Hamlet. So there was a path here too that took Took us past the backside of this house. I kind of want to check it out. They just were leaving because of disease and starvation. They thought it was doomsday. I saw the same thing happen at home. There we go. Got some leather out of it. Not the busiest stables I've ever seen. No ostler and no horses. If they burned their crops and ran out of food, then they probably ate the horses. I wonder what horse meat tastes like. Committee. Let's find the inn. Let's find Charles. I don't know. We saw in that opening cinematic that there was a gravestone. It'll be good to see Charles and Esther again. Charles' name on it. <laughs> Would you a lecture on the sanctity of marriage? Uh, area of investigation. You've reached the location of your objective. A pretty word for a set of shackles. I'm sure folk here are just as open minded as Charles. Sometimes inns are near the the main gate, but oh, here's a sign that says inn <laughs> to the right. All right. Oh, there's a person. Hello. Hello there, pilgrim. Speak. Uh, Red, you want to get out of the man's face? Good day, sir. You'll be Haskell's banishers, I take it. Antea Duarte. This is Red McGraith. Hugh Bachelor. The governor had me prepare the schoolhouse for your comfort. It has fallen out of use. Will that be all? Uh, where 
are the children? Where are the children? Several died of fever. We could see disaster coming. We thought we'd have to bury them all. We sent the children to safety. We sent them away. That can't have been easy. It can't be easy now. No. No, it is not. We're expected at the tavern. Where might we find it? The King's Arm. You can't miss it for the lamps are lit. The school is now a bunkhouse, and the meeting house cold and dark. But the tavern shines yet. Well then, let us be thankful for small mercies. Farewell, Mr. Bachelor. And you may wish us luck. <laughs> Good luck, then, to the both of you. I don't know that I've ever invited anyone to wish me luck before. What a strange interaction. Oh, here's another note. The Devil's Work. Town has filled with sinners. To hell with evil worshippers who do the Devil's Work. We should have sent them all away. God watches us here as we live, willingly, with treacherous liars. These chanting demons will not get the likes of me, but they might corrupt the weak-minded. May fervor and prayer bless our souls in these times of trial. Whatever's going on here, I suspect it to be a little worse than the devil's work. Must be. Letting a Scots Catholic walk about unchanged. <laughs> All right, I'm guessing that's the inn directly in front of us there. Since Mr. Bachelor said the lanterns were lit. There's the inn. Doomsday has come. Boy, cheery bunch. Wait, did I just see a collectible? Yeah, I did. Or lootable, at least. Excuse me. Charlie, we're here. Your prayers are answered. Poor as a drink. Finally. Banish it. Please, come in. As it is gold, your serving woman may sit while we talk. Oh. I'm the help. She's the boss. <laughs> You're not Charles. My name is Antea Duarte. This is my partner, Red McWraith. Good day to you, sirs, madam. Now, where's Charles? Minister Davenport said help was on its way. I assume. Keep digging, Fairfax. Good day. Pennington, captain of the train band. This here is thick skin Newsmith. We're the selectmen. <laughs> What's left of us? Why is Charles not here? We're sorry for your loss. We'll do what we can for his widow. The Reverend is dead. When? How? A terrible tragedy. Though our faith sustains us, we are still very much in shock. Our shock at Reverend Davenport's killing is so great that we must sit here in comfort, losing precious time. As governor of the colony of New Eden, it is my responsibility. Oh, look at us, sat here waiting to meet the same fate. We could all be miles away by now. You lot do what you want. I intend living. The esteemed select woman can be <coughs> brusque. Forgive her. And rest assured that her aptitudes far outweigh her manners. Or lack thereof. Her point still stands, Fairfax. Sitting here, doing nothing, we are as lambs to the slaughter. The banishers are here. Surely, with their expertise, we may yet prevail. Then I shall leave you in your expertise in ghosts and devils to find out. 
My expertise in blood and battle is of little use. Mistress Duarte, if I can be of service, you may visit me at home. On the other side of the street, as it were. <laughs> well, Governor, shall you leave or shall you stay? For myself, I'll stay. <clears throat> Our company has suffered terribly, but we are worth saving, and now that you are here, save it we shall. Please, accept my sincerest condolences for the loss of your friend. We feel the loss of our minister so very keenly. Charles Davenport was a man of great knowledge and devotion, the pride indeed of New Eden. It discommodes me greatly to remember how we found his body in the cemetery. Indeed, it distresses me yet further to tell you that we do not know what so tragically cost him his life. What do you think happened? I could guess, to little use. It is evident, however, that Charles's unexpected death is linked to his investigation of the curse. In the Minister's absence, I try, in all humility, to protect us all, body and soul, from our ongoing peril. You see, in my youth, I too was something of a demonologist. Rather a good one, if I say so myself. We're not demonologists. And neither was Charles. Is his widow Esther taking visitors? The widow Davenport is at home and does not much venture out. Her house overlooks the dock. I offered Charles a home with a view across a pretty meadow, but he refused. He preferred the village life. Speak to her, if she'll see you. But she knows no more than we do about how her husband died. So I'm guessing that in the dialogue options here, the one that has this flag at the top is that will move the conversation along permanently, and these others are uh, optional. So probably do these first before you go to the yellow one. I think that's how it worked in Vampire as well. Why is town so empty? Of those who did not die, we are the few who stayed. Though our motivations may differ, all who remain have shown extraordinary faith and courage in the face of our adversity. Those who left, where did they go? Boston, outlying settlements, anywhere, everywhere. Although, as you may have heard, the weather has likely closed the roads. Some believe the pass through the dark woods offers salvation. I do not. <laughs> that doesn't sound promising. I believe we must stand our ground. Will they return when the curse is lifted? I fervently hope so. They have homes here. But we sent the children away some time ago, and many could not live with their absence. If we do not resolve this situation quickly, the community of New Eden shall be broken. Perhaps forever. Really enjoying the voice performances, too. Vampire had good voice acting. This one is also good. You're a demonologist, you say? I am that, like my father was before me. Faith and science are our twin compasses, you see, to a deeper understanding of the secrets of God's green and pleasant land and those who threaten it. And what have your compasses told you about the curse? They have told me... They have told me that Reverend Davenport was better placed than I to solve our problem. Which is why you're here. We agreed it. I shall stand for the company, I said. As the moral authority, the anchor, and the rock. As Charles and his banishers lift the curse. Heroic work all around. Uh, 
Heroic work all round. Indeed it is, madam. Indeed it is. But we do it all the same. Because we must. Right. Because we must. All right. Now let's find out about the curse. What can you tell me about the curse? I can tell you that it has been our misery for many long months now. And I can tell you that it worsens by the increment. First, there was pestilence and disease. Then came the nightmares. Then came madness. In the end came death. And death remains. But in all honesty, <laughs> I think the weather is the worst part. Okay. This never-ending winter hangs heavy on us all. Worse yet, it traps us here. Okay, that was my big question was, is the weird weather caused by it? So yes, yes it is. Uh, what caused it? What do you think caused the curse? In my humble opinion, I'll point to the obvious. The abyss disgorges its spawn upon New Eden, bent on making God's poor creatures suffer. As to the nature of the demon, that's what we're paying you to find out. Our late friend Charles faced a Herculean task and acquitted himself with honor. You will have to do far better than that, I'm afraid. Our contract stands. If you'll have it, yes. Our contract stands for Charles. All right, for Charles. All right, that'll wrap this first. Thank you. We have what we need. Then I wish you success. By my instruction, a room is prepared for you in the old schoolhouse. I'll be here if you need me. Okay, before we leave, I'd like to check around. See if there aren't any little notes or anything that we can... Read, examine... Such as, Inn's owner notice, as announced at the last town hall meeting, I hereby close the King's Arms Tavern, leaving the key to the selectmen. There shall be no ale sold nor drunk until the curse is lifted and I return. The storerooms are locked and so are the bedrooms. God bless. Charity Crooked. Man, I love this room. Love this room. Little candlelight. Reading. You've got your bookcases here. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. If ever I am able to have a home that has a library in it, that's the that's the vibe I'm looking for. Dark wood. Alright, well, here's here's the first of the locked bedrooms. Eighteen pieces of eight. So there's our first currency. All right, the music is suitably unsettling. I wonder who the composer is. I think the last few Don't Nod projects that I've played it was um, Olivier Derivier? Derivier, I think. Olivier Derivier, is that his name? Anyway, I wonder if uh, compass compass Damn indicates the direction chance. and distance Those toward an objective. Sea storms. If only we'd been here earlier. No, oh, no. But as Charles would say, another day, another soul to save. Uh. Hmm. These people have no idea what they're up against. So we've got. More notices here. New Eden Town's curfew. In the hours of darkness, stay in your homes. No discord. No turmoil. Wow, they had discord back then? That's that's impressive. A curfew? But why? Uh, the first resort of every self-respecting oppressor. 
The path to the meeting house is closed by the governor's decree. And the cemetery is closed by order of the governor. So I first saw this bulletin board and immediately thought of the, uh, the contract boards from The Witcher. The Witcher 3, specifically. We should go to Esther. I think the governor said that house stood above the docks. Is this thick skin? Thick skin, right? Yep. We're sorry to disturb you. It'll take more than you to disturb me. What do you want? I take it you intend to leave town. Bloody right, I do. New Eden is dying and anyone who stays is dead or deranged. There's no hope for New Eden then. Not till the weather changes and it don't look like changing. Okay, so also I'm noticing on the dialogue options the yellow plus sign in the upper left corner of the text indicates that you can you can uh, select both of these options without you know that will lead down the path of dialogue, but if there is no plus sign then you choose one of the two options, looks like. Will you go alone? I'll take my sister and anyone else who wishes. You may come too if you wish. You look like you can handle yourself. What's your role here, if you don't mind me asking? Lately, I do what needs doing when no one else will, weakened as they are by comfort and the curse. In normal times, I hunt. Now, though... It's cold enough to freeze the nankies off an horse, and the game rots <laughs> the, as quick as you can get it the home. The nankies. You can't eat a ghost, can't skin it, can't sell it. So what'll be the use? So, the curse. What do you think is going on? I think nothing much about it. I think folk sickened and the crops failed. I think folk went mad, and I know we found the Reverend dead. What of the governor? Anything I should know? That useless clat wagger. With Davenport dead, godly folk look to be led. Fairfax Askell couldn't be happier. I pity he'll get them all killed. Jeez. She's got some fun terminology. Nankies, clat wagger. <laughs> what of the captain? Now there's a man of worth. Without Saul Pennington, there'd be no town left at all. These last months have been hard on him. I hope his metal holds. If I had my way, he'd be coming with us. I don't give a rat's knacks for loyalty. But the captain does. Okay, so Pennington's maybe somebody we can trust. Well then, thank you for your help. Aye. All right, her house is locked. I wouldn't want to ransack it anyway. So let's head over, continue following our compass, see if we can find Esther. Pay our respects and offer our condolences for the death of the Reverend. Pyrite? What? Fool's gold. I've barely slept for fear you would not come. I'm at a loss. Would God even allow me to drag you into these... these dark times? 
Esther, you're not alone now. We're here. I'm so sorry we didn't get here on time. Truly. I know. Charles kept saying it. Have faith. They will come. If only he had kept his faith himself. What happened to him? Poor Charles. Just one more victim of the curse of New Eden. You know how he is. Was. Restless. Impatient. It's not that he gave up on you, his friends. But that he could wait no more. I believe he tried to lift the curse. I too have questions. But I have no answers. Nor do I now have a husband. That is a wild collar she's wearing. How were things, you know, before all this? Before the curse? It was a busy and exciting time. Charles immersed himself in the community here. He had a hand in everything. The people came to rely on him. I'm sure they look to someone else now, but I can't imagine it's the same. What can you tell me about the esteemed Governor Haskell? Fairfax Haskell is well-read and educated, but at times his back can be too stiff. He shares Charles's interest in the unknown, but his passion seems less than practical. He's an academic. Still, good to know our patron has some understanding of our work. We met the captain, too, along with the huntress, Thickskin. Do you know them? I find Thickskin knew Smith's manner a little frightening, but I think she has a good heart. A fine hunter, by all accounts. Captain Pennington comes with a reputation for soldiering. He comports himself with a wry dignity, but I suspect that beneath it all, he's just... Sad. Charles thought so too. There are wounds beneath Saul Pennington's armor, he said, that time and God have not yet healed. Jeez. Is there anything we should know about? Lord, deliver me, for I cannot endure this. I cannot endure it, and Charles does not deserve it. Anything at all, Esther. Please. I have felt Charles present about the house. His ghost lingers. He needs help. If he's here, I promise I will know no rest until he has his. You can count on us. We'll start with the house. Charles's papers are gathered in his office. Take what you need. Thank you, Esther. We'll take a look around, if that's all right. May I be of any help? Mm, stay put. Oh, we'll portrait. find a way. All right, inhabitant portrait. The once joyful and educated good friend of Antia and Red is now a young widow who has lost her anchor and drifts unmoored on a sea of mourning. So these are interesting. Okay, so these are very similar to uh, the vampire. Uh, we have to find notes, talk to people, do investigations to fill these in, to learn as much as we can about, about Esther. Uh, followed landfall. Understand why Charles lingers. Investigate the study. Investigate the bedroom. All right, New Eden Town. And set out in search. Oh, this there was. I was down too low. Although the path held surprises and many bad omens, Red and Antia at last reached New Eden Town, and set about in search of their friend, the Reverend Charles Davenport. Fairfax Haskell, governor of New Eden, informed the banishers that Charles was dead. After confirming their contract to lift the curse from New Eden, still stood. Antia and Red visited Esther, Charles's widow, distraught and grieving. She also told the Banisher something disturbing. She told them she felt him present. All 
All right, hints and intent. You've unlocked your first hint. It contains important information about the person it's linked to. You can refer to these hints at any t uh, any moment through your haunted cases menu. Uh, to understand why a ghost lingers in the incarnate, you must gather hints about each involved inhabitant. Once the hints have all been uncovered, the inhabitant's intent is disclosed and you may complete your investigation. All right, we've got a couple documents here on the table, so let's start with those. Bundle of letters from Charles, 21st day of February, 1687. My sweet Esther, I can't tell you how much I long to get home. This work in the mystical Scottish Highlands is exciting. I can't argue with that, but I miss the sweetness of our home. Scottish Highlands, so I wonder if this is where he met Red. Uh, however, I know that the few months I have left away from your loving arms will be of great benefit to me. Through this experience, I will increase my knowledge and all this I do to protect you from those dark worlds that swirl around us. It is your love and trust that pushes me into these mysterious entrenchments that pushes me to do my best. It is for you that I do this. For when I can see the pride in your eyes, then I know what role I play on this earth. I know that I can be stronger. I know I can do anything as long as you look at me with that spark that is only yours. Thinking of you, your love forever, Charles. Wow, Charles was uh, quite a romantic. Bundle of letters from Charles, 5th day of January, 1685. My beloved Esther, how I long to hold you in my arms. The announcement of our marriage was to my heart as a delicacy on my palate, a sweet of which one cannot tire. At last we shall be together and together forever and ever until the, many, until the day many years from now when we are old and at last death separates us. For only death can extinguish the love between us, and I am sure that not even death can undo the tenderness I feel for you. I want everything to be perfect for our marriage, and I will take it so. Make it so, I will make it so. Wow. I will write to you every day until that blessed moment when I can finally shed the weight of these of letters and tell you in person every day how I feel about you. Thinking of you, your love forever, Charles. Feels a little intrusive reading all of these letters from him. 12th day of August, 1684. My sweet Esther. I was down and yet you were there to support me. You are an angel from heaven to help me in my dark mission. You are the light that guides me through the darkness of the invisible. And yet I feel so sorry for bringing you to this tortured land. You know well that things are not as they should be in New Eden. And I am sorry to have to have you by my side, for I fear for your life. I wish we could have found a quiet corner of this land there to raise our children, but I fear a curse. I think we should leave. Or perhaps you should go ahead while I defend our home. Think about it, for I cannot bear the thought of darkness taking you away from me. Your love forever, Charles. That porcelain saw many a dinner turned lecture with Charles. <laughs> I miss him so. So do we, Esther. So do we. All right, let's check out the rest of the downstairs. Uh, sheet music, a new Scotch tune in G major by Henry Purcell. Can you play it? Purcell? Could you find nothing better? <laughs> These days, I lack the heart to play. I believe you brought your piano forte to New England. It cost a fortune. But you cannot part a pianist from their beloved keys. <laughs> Letter from Eleanor Combs, November 1694. My dear Charles, how delighted I was to read your words. It has always been a pleasure to hear from you and to know that you, that yourself and your beloved Esther are doing well. I have contacted our brothers in London, but unfortunately we could not find anything in our archives that matches the description of the events you have experienced in New Eden. 
Be that as it may, pestilence and never-ending winters are a phenomena perhaps too broad for us to pinpoint the exact cause. I can give you no better answer. Be it sorcery, the presence of an ichor, or something else entirely, we cannot say. Wait a minute! Icor! That's that was a that was an element of vampire. So are these games did that just establish these games in the same the same universe? That's awesome. I hope so. All I can do is invite you to continue your research and to take note of all of your observations. Our Brotherhood of St. Paul, yep. St. Paul's stole. There we go. That's it. Yep, that was that was the organization in London. Uh, our Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole has so little presence in the New World. Any new information shall be precious indeed. Please stay safe, my friend. Yours truly, Eleanor Combs. Was that Eleanor Combs? I'm going to have to look her up because I feel like that might be someone... What was the name of the woman who... Uh, Helped Jonathan, the redhead. Was her? Was that Eleanor? Oh, I'll have to look that up. I'll have to look that up. Ooh, okay. All right, I got a project. I don't know Eleanor and Charles were still in touch. The Saint Paul Brotherhood is a tie that binds. Charles was so eager to continue his research here in New Eden. If only we had known what would befall us. Because yes, while this game takes place in the late seventeenth century and Vampire takes place in nineteen. 18 just after World War One, uh, they were vampires and they were old. So, have you received other visitors? Most dare not leave their homes. Although Mr. Bachelor came to see me, that was nice of him. Oh, Mr. Bachelor moving in on the. Where are you staying, my dears? The governor had a room prepared for us in the schoolhouse. The schoolhouse. Wouldn't you rather stay here? Y yeah, it You'd seems much more cozy. Very kind, but a long day ahead of us. I don't want to bother you. I don't have much, but promise me you'll come for dinner tomorrow. For old time's sake. Of course. Totally. Okay, we've got st other stuff here, though. This is Charles's. It's like he never left. All right, letter from a neighbor, Esther. Some food and ale for you. Sorry for your loss. Your neighbors hold you in their hearts. Well, that's sweet. Printed book. A study of H. Purcell's uh, Shakani? Shakani? Shakani in G minor for strings by E. Davenport. What? She wrote this? Wow. You're not going to say anything about that, Antia? Music essay. Sadness and Interval, or a study of the Aeolian scale by Heinrich Pietri. All right, we still got to go upstairs. This is uh, quite a lot to do here. It feels weird invading their little upstairs area, but... Charles is still here, and Esther is completely distraught. She lost him, and now he's back. A ghastly figure. It must be unbearable. Faith always was his beacon in the darkness. In people as much as in God. He's a good man. I can still picture him crafting your very first Bane ring. <laughs> you sound much more fond of the moment now than you were back then. Bit green for an actual haunting, you said. <laughs> you were. Still, you did all right. Chess piece, precious king from a chess set, protected by a glass of glass dome. Why? What's special about this particular chess piece? Is that going to come back? That's from the set he taught me with. I'd know it anywhere. Did he keep it to remind him of his favorite? Or to remind him that he had yet to beat me. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
old map of the world. Wow. Uh, some errors. <laughs> Remember when he started to wear these to look wiser and older? <laughs> oh, he was hiding his hair loss. <laughs> Alright, theological book from Charles's personal collection. Fortalicium? For Macarius by Johannes Nieder. Charles's notes. None on this side of the water and few on the other know that I came to New Eden as minister in order to pursue research into the new world on behalf of St. Brother... Oh! On behalf of the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stoll. And what strangeness I have found. There are ghosts here, yes, old and innumerable, but they are quiet. I shall never say the word aloud, but I suspect there to be witches. And if I find one, I shall very much like to ask her for her story. A cult book from Charles's personal collection. Tod für die Toten by Balthasar Hans Frenhofer. Tod. Tod für die Toten? Tod. Für die Toten means for the dead. Tod? I thought Tod was. To, uh, I'll have to look that up. I don't remember. Tod. I can't remember what that word means. Toten is dead, but I don't, I don't know if Tod, Tod is a different conjugation. Dead for the dead? That doesn't. Death for the dead? Not sure. I'll have to look that up. My German is old and rusty. Alright, well, here we go. This is probably going to kick off something. Scribbled Bible verses. Job 7, 13, 15. When I say, my bed shall comfort me, my couch shall ease my complaints... Then thou scarest me with dreams, and terrifiest me through visions, so that my soul chooseth strangling, and death rather than my that, geez, rather than my life. She comes to me in dreams. Charles's notes mention Job chapter seven, verses thirteen to fifteen. I'll look for that reference. Red, you dropped something. Hmm. <laughs> Charles's notes. What do all these dreams have in common? Are they the promise of a doomsday or a nightmare coming? Visions? Foreshadowing? Is someone behind this? Who is the real target and what caused this anger to burst forth? I need to know how it gets into our heads. Sleep no longer offers rest and this cannot. Perdure? Perdure. I don't think I've ever seen that word in my life before. I'm gonna... Well, I got homework. This These game. These are erratic ramblings. Charles was worried about the curse plaguing the settlers' dreams. How malicious is this curse tormenting people in their beds? Alright, we've got a bit of hint from... Charles here. Charles is worried about the influence of the threatening spirit had on the settler's dreams. Alright. Gotta visit the bedroom still. When I first met Charles, he was reading his... What? You... You could have followed me and kept talking, dude. Alright. Well, sorry everybody that we missed that. 
Where do nightmares come from? I remember the teachings of my masters. May God bless their souls. Against the threatening unknown, when the common knowledge is not enough to understand a situation, the sagacious and pious man will wisely turn to the very roots of his art, the words, their meaning, and the power hidden in each of them. Nightmare has nothing to do with a nocturnal female horse. <laughs> As in the French Koshemar or the German Nachtmar, nightmare here comes from 12th century Middle Dutch and means ghost or demon. A nightmare is not a puny fiend sneaking into the bedrooms to suffocate the dreamers, but one of the rarest and most powerful spirit defined by its only purpose to separate its insidious, sorry, to spread its insidious and unforgiving wrath upon any living soul it may reach. According to my research, no occultist has ever successfully banished a nightmare. But why? Could a nightmare be more than a ghost? I am afraid so. I remember a disturbing poem I read in London in my younger years about the terrifying abilities of such entity supposedly able to penetrate the dreams of its targets, to influence their thoughts and perception, and make them endure their worst fear, able even to bend the distance or alter time, creating tantalizing and personalized nightmare its victims can't hope to escape from. It's such a petrifying concept. I pray to God with all my heart and soul that this is not what has risen upon us, how would we then escape despair, death, and doom? I need more information. But where to find them? Oh dear! Charles's brooch, silver brooch, habitually worn by Charles Davenport, engraved with a distinctive three-hilted sword. Charles always wore this brooch. His things are untouched. Nothing's moved. Remember how they used to argue about books we hadn't read? Like we weren't there? <laughs> you actually listened. I'd always let my mind wander. Alright, let's check out these two items first before we hit that specific quest one. Children's Psalm. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Psalm 127.3 Doctor's note, three drops of lavender oil in chamomile infusion before sleep, wintergreen to rub between palms and behind ears three times a day. If restlessness persists, use lemon balm, Eveline. All right, unsent letter to Esther's sister. My dear sister, Charles is dead. I cannot tell right from left. I cannot tell which day it is or how long ago my Charles departed. My world has come undone. Nothing has happened. Nothing happened as it was supposed to. I could not attend the burial. The shame of it. How I have failed, my dear husband. I just could not find the strength to leave the house and walk to the place where Charles died. To s there to see him buried. Lord, have mercy on us and guide our friends to us before it is too late. New Eden will not last much longer without my beloved husband to protect it. I do not have any words left in me, but I thought that you, who loved him so, should know of his passing. My love, Esther. Esther couldn't attend Charles's burial. Poor woman. That's terrible for her. Esther... Okay, so we've got all three hints for her now. Esther did not properly bid her husband farewell and now suffers from it. She feels guilty, of course. All right, so that's this. All right, I just did that. Okay, so now we still have, we still have one more thing. 
They never got to say farewell to Charles. I could have made him manifest. Now that we know why he might be back, we should go investigate the cemetery where he was found. Maybe he's back to give her the opportunity to say goodbye. Since he was such a romantic, he might be doing that. And if so, does that mean that all ghosts, not all ghosts, are, are bad? I mean, he's not here in the house to haunt her. Esther, I'm sorry to trouble you once more. How may I help? With all that's happened, how are you bearing up? This all feels so unreal. Just one more nightmare from which I cannot wake. It seems so now, but that will change. I promise. Was there something I should have done differently? Did I fail him? Did I fail Charles? None of this is your fault. I do not want to believe he is gone. He cannot be gone. I do not permit him to be gone. You're in pain, and that might have brought him back. Maybe he lingers because you suffer. We'll do what we can to ease your pain. And we'll do what we can for Charles. Has the curse brought with it nightmares? Yes. I've had nightmares. I suspect we all have. Charles warned that something was stalking our dreams. That it had a use for us. That we needed to fight it with all God's might. But... Now Charles is gone, and my nightmares have changed. In my sleep, I see my husband falling, screaming into the abyss. All hear him. None respond. He plummets on into the bottomless pit. Poor Charles. We must make our way to the cemetery. Please be careful, dear Antea. Right, off we go. What will you do for my Charles? Everything we can. If he's present, we'll find him. Then we'll ask him what he wants us to do. Must I see him too? First, let's find out what happened. After that, we'll see. Best get started. Time may be against us. You'll be all right. I doubt it, but I'll do my work all the same. We came here to help Charles and help Charles with Shell. Ask around, see what people will tell you. I'll go to the cemetery and do the same. Be careful. Aye, you too. Why are you separating? Oh, map. To find the location of your next objective, open your map. La. Okay, so we're gonna have, let's see, go to the right, down around by the docks to Sincere Paris's shop, to here. I mean, if you're both ghost hunters, or banishers, and you think you're heading toward where a ghost might be, why are you going to separate? I must take a moment by myself. Excuse me. Very well. Get out of my way. Woo! Attitude. Somebody's grumpy. Warning, the docks are closed for sabotage by fire. All trade to Boston, Marblehead, Salem, etc. is cut. Until the saboteur is caught. Ooh, I wonder if that's something we can help with.
Be warned. I need but cry out, and help shall come in an instant. Calm you, sir. Antea Duarte, Minister Davenport's banisher. Oh, oh, of course, I'm so sorry. Poor Reverend Davenport, his death has shaken us all. Welcome to New Eden. I'm afraid you find us at our worst. We're banishers. There's nowhere else we'd rather be. And <laughs> you are? I, madam, am Squire Sincere Paris, traveling merchant, stuck in this cursed place and eager to be somewhere else. Tell me about the curse, if you will. Well, I'll tell you this. Those who dare defy the curse are brave indeed, and, I fear, foolish. Banishing is a job, sir. And to do it, I need detail. If you please. A banisher must have charms. Uh, trinkets, I mean, of protection. If you have a surplus, I'd happily relieve you of your burden. <laughs> Uh, what I need is information. Yeah. What I need right now is information about the curse. What have you seen that might help me with my work? I've seen famine, madness, the shadow of early death, weather too. So much weather. I mean, I've seen it all before, but never all at once. Here, it's everything, everywhere, and all at the same time. Folks stay indoors, waiting to be told what to do. Waiting to die, really. Ghosts in the making, all of them. Jeez. The nightmares. Do you get them too? Of course I do. Not everyone will admit it, but we all have bad dreams. Of what do you dream? I dream someone watches me sleep. I sometimes fancy she's present when I'm awake. She never speaks, nor moves. She seems to wish me no harm. She just stands there, watching me, waiting, taking my measure. Does she manifest at a particular hour? If she does, I have no way of knowing it, unable as we are in this interminable grey to tell day from night. Well, there you are. Information on the curse, as per your request. <laughs> uh, Smart Alec. I won't even charge you for it. <laughs> You're leaving town? As soon as possible. Did you arrive by sea? A ship lies at anchor in the bay. Perhaps a captain would take me and my wares to safety. The crew refused to dock, and I suspect they'll leave on the next available tide. We rode ourselves ashore. Might I ask where you abandoned this rowboat of yours? Along the coast, by a path remarkable for its angry spectres and bloody corpses. If you wish to make the Golly. sailing, I hope your wares can swim. All right, let's see what he's got to sell. To trade. Most of my goods are already packed, but I never refuse a deal. Let's see how this works. So we can buy leather, fur, linen, wool, all right, he's got a neutral opinion. This is the merchandise you may buy or sell. So I wonder if we do stuff for him, if, if that'll improve his attitude toward us and give us better prices maybe? Don't know. Uh, then we can sell. I don't really want to sell any of the stuff until I know what it does, how I can use it. So I think we're just going to exit. I bid you good day, Squire Paris, and thank you for your time. A pleasure, Mistress Duarte. Do be careful. <laughs> Did we just rob the guy? Well, we'll see. Okay, so we're heading along the coast. Oh, good, we've got a very handy sign here. Thank you very much. Ugh, more rats. Oh, whoa! Hello! Is this a will-o'-the-wisp? A ghost? Uh, a wisp? 
so close to town. Cemetery closed by order of the governor. Make our own entrance. Find the place Charles died. In the Where cemetery. Are you leading me? Press B to dodge twice to roll. Oh, what is this? Uh oh. Holy crap. That. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> oh, boy. Two hits. That thing killed me. All right, let's be a little better about this. Ooh. More of you? Oops. Whoa. Okay. This is going to be a thing. <laughs> All right, we can do this. We can do this. All right, we might want to maybe do... Okay. All right, these are regular ghosts. I could beat you in my sleep. Press left bumper to block. Left bumper at the last moment to parry. So this does this. Oh, okay. So blocking doesn't immediately or uh, fully. Ooh, that wasn't good. That was a stun. Oh god. Oh god. Get up. Oh. Hold me, man. All right. This is, uh, definitely challenging. So we've got to be a little... Whoop! Oh, crud. They're coming, and I haven't finished this guy off yet. Oh, come on! Okay. That was a one-hitter. So when it does that leap attack, that's just instant death. Oh. I totally... Alright. I'm pretty sure I dodged there, but mm, apparently not far enough. Oh, that's a neat one. Okay, so we got the blue one. Oops. Okay, 
Okay, I was trying to do the parry, but they actually haven't given me the the tutorial for it yet, so maybe maybe I can't do it yet. Well, you tried. There we go. Uh, I don't remember how to... Oh, X to use the health thingy. There we go. Oh, I had a Banish available there. I didn't even use it. Duck on it. Well, maybe there'll be another one of those blue ones. Most of these people died fighting. Someone didn't want them here. direction do we go? There's a thing here. Oh. Mushroom. What was that? Ooh, as Banisher, you can feel places or objects that have been marked by ghosts. When in proximity to these elements, your Bane Rings will be triggered and the light up with orange aura. Walk around to find the source. I've seen more graves here than I've met settlers. Oop. Oh, that looks... That looks like something. A memory lingers here. I might be able to reveal it. Perform ritual. Ritual side. Alright, rituals. Memories of the dead linger here. To reveal them, you must gather the necessary resources. Seashore candles. Uh, can be found in the Harrow's region or bought from merchants. Seashore candles. The Harrow's region. If I mix the stones I found earlier with seashore candle, that might do it. Alright, the Harrow's region. I don't know. None of these have names yet, so I guess I haven't discovered them yet. Some more pyrite. Uh oh. What the heck? What were those? area up here is the lootiest. And that'll drop me... Oops. There okay. should be seashore candle near the water. Oh! So let's go this way, because this is where the water is. Many dead in more recent years.
Here we go. Maybe this is it. Great. Okay. That is apparently ice, and she doesn't want to walk on it, so... Okay. Back we go. Oop. I'm guessing this is too high to climb. Okay, so we're gonna have to go back around. Oh, here's Charles's gravestone. Why didn't you wait for us, old friend? I swear I'll make it up to you. All right. Let's get up here and do this ritual. All right. Banishers perform rituals. Nature of the site determines the ritual, which ritual should be performed. Performing a ritual consumes resources, even if you select an incorrect ritual. Uh-oh. <laughs> to reveal the memories, you need to perform a hearkening ritual. So, make manifest. Force a ghost or specter to appear. Using or knowing the tie that binds a ghost to the incarnate is generally necessary. Such a ritual may be channeled through compelling words, carving, or drawing of the Taurus constellation. Summon Scourge. Force a Scourge to appear. Sustained through compelling words, carving, or drawing of the Aquila constellation. This ritual force all types of Scourges, Harvester, Rage, Sorrow, etc. to reveal themselves. And Hearkening. Reveal an Echo. This ritual helps to tune into a fading but persistent memory left by a lingering ghost through compelling words, carving, or drawing of the Leo constellation. Alright, well it told us to do a hearkening, so that's what we're gonna go with. In each stain hides a story. In the name of the Lord, I command you. Be gone from this place! You do not command me, clergyman. Who are you, Who's Ghost? Talking? Unveil yourself! Well, since you ask so politely... <laughs> Who are you? I am everything you've ever feared. Wow. Be gone! You have no shell, no ties, no purpose. No, but neither do you. <gasps> Killed him with magic missile. Damn it. That thing he faced. What was it? Alrighty. Facing the terrifying entity threatening New Eden, Charles Davenport's heart gave out.
All right, so that's both of these complete now. Uh, there's no new information here. All right, Charles's Bible found half buried in the mud of the cemetery. It's opened at Job 7, 13 to 15. Uh, so these are the same same uh, lines that were in the in the bedroom. So this tie is doused with the essence of Charles's ghost. After a closure performed by Antia, the bond between the ghost and the world will be severed for good. The tie that binds his ghost. With it, I can make him manifest. Back to his grave, then. Okay, so we already knew those details. Perform another ritual. Rituals <laughs> required resources. Charles's Bible. Uh, it's just going to consume the Bible if you pick the wrong thing. Force a ghost or specter to appear. Summon a scourge. Reveal an echo. Make the ghost manifest. So. Here we go. Now is a good time for we old friends to talk. We've come too far, Red and I, not to see you one last time. Your pupil has become the master. If we fight, I'll beat you. Uh-oh. Let's hope we don't have to fight. Because I suck at the combat so far. Come on, Charles. Join me now. I know you're here. I know you're here. You know me, Ghost. I only wish to talk. Esther worries. And I am here at last. Oh, poor Esther. I'm so sorry, my friend. So sorry for us all. What happened? What's going on here? Sad to say, dear friend, I made a mistake, and it cost me my life. Is Red with you? There is no time to waste. Why did you not wait for our help? The threat was rising, despair growing. There were so many dead and dead. So much sickened flesh. So many afflicted souls. There was no more time. Do you know how this curse began? What prompted it, I do not know. Nor do I know when. Many months ago, certainly. But I do know this. This nightmare chose New Eden for a reason. So, a ghost. This one is different. Implacable. Very clever. Many magnitudes more ferocious than a spectre, and just as relentless. Before you died, you investigated the curse. What did you learn? That our enemy is deceptive and merciless. That we should not underestimate its power. We? 
I am dead, dearest Dante. But I am a banisher yet. I may still teach you. If I allow you, which I do not. <laughs> and here, do not repeat my mistakes. If a nightmare curses New Eden, you need all the help you can get. Its presence felt strongest in the meeting house. Perhaps the light of God there forced it to fight its ground. I had the building closed. The worst of the malevolence is contained. But it won't stay locked up for long. We'll banish it, Red and I. Our good friend's death shall not go unpunished. Be warned. This nightmare is too angry to be persuaded. And too powerful to be destroyed. Your death pains us greatly. Your return pains me too. I know. For my part, I'm glad to have seen you one last time. To have had the chance to warn you. I thought nightmares were a myth. A nightmare is the rarest of ghosts. A powerful, insidious spirit, birthed by tragedy most dreadful. How do I banish it? There is meager wisdom in the texts. What little there is says it cannot be banished at all. If it's a ghost, I can banish it. You took notes, I suppose? Where might I find them? They... Vanished. Oh, great. In the days before my death. Perhaps I mislaid them. Which is not like me. Yeah, somebody took them. If you find them, read them carefully. Perhaps I missed something. Something important. How did this nightmare kill you? I believed that I could come to the cemetery and make it manifest. To my initial delight, it worked. I now suspect it came by choice. It seemed amused. As if it were a pleasant game to weigh my measure as a man. Alright, what did it look like? How does its malevolence manifest? How does its malevolence manifest? It poisons minds and sickens bodies. It draws spectres to it and sours the weather. It delivers nightmares to one's sleep. For a time, screams tore through the night as folk awoke in terror. When it appeared to me, I did not see its true face. But I heard a woman. She was... love. I felt her gaze. My heart froze. I died. The spirit is vengeance pure. The ghost of one who was terribly wronged. I've heard your warning. You can go. No. I must remain. Esther needs my protection. My flock needs me too. You know how this works. You know I won't allow that. I am still myself, Antea. With time, I'll grow stronger. I can help you. The longer you haunt Esther, the hungrier you'll be. You know this. This is different. I'm the Reverend Charles Davenport, your friend and mentor. You know me. You know I am a good man. I knew you. You were a good man. Now you are a ghost, and I cannot let that stand. But I swear it, the nightmare what? will end, and Red and I shall do the ending. Charles Davenport was a good man, and a fine mentor. And you a fine student, though you took a hard line. <laughs> I never could unpick that from your character. Has life tempered you since? No. Life has tempered my steel. Death and the manner of it has made you the very thing you once opposed. Goodbye, Charles. Peace on your soul. Remembrance on your I think, wait. Wait for what? We're banishers. Death to the dead. Let Esther choose for herself. Oh Lord, please don't ask me to do that. Esther, 
my good wife, and the very best. I miss you so. Oh, dear Lord Charles, why are you here? Why have you come back? You must leave, please. I must stay. I must protect you. The thing in the meeting house feeds on our torment. I should have known better. I know better now. Antia, give Charlie the ascent he deserves. Charles Davenport, you have no reason to stay. Go. Let Esther grieve in peace. Save her, my friend. And save yourselves. Save them all. If that was an option, why didn't she choose to do that in the first place? Cold, Antia. I'll walk Esther home. I'll do it. The women can talk. Uh, then all the way to the schoolhouse and make the bed. Charles is at rest now. Antia, she gave him the care he needed. Escort Esther home. Okay, folks, this was a long first episode, but we got Charles uh, laid to rest finally. His spirit has ascended now, apparently. Uh, not quite sure what that means in terms of the lore, but I think this is probably a good place to take a break. I really do appreciate you watching this video. Hit the thumbs up if you would. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you think about Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden down in the comments below. Is this a game that you're planning on playing or are you just uh, watching people's playthroughs? I'll see you next episode. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Oh, yeah.